Let's take a look at more cases of multiple authors. So here we have this case we kind of looked at, three authors, or we don't really know if it's three, it could be more than three, it could be three, four, five. Baron is the last name, Sabrina Alcorn. So this is the lead author, the first author. Surname, family name, Baron, Sabrina Alcorn. Alcorn is the middle name. The middle name we could just use A period, that would be okay too. And in this case we would use A period comma because then we also have at all. We have more than just one author at all. And so this at all means there's more authors. How many? We don't know. Period, comma, no space in there, then one space, editors. This is this case where we're saying it's the editor. Agent of Change, Print Culture Studies, after Elizabeth L. Eisenstein. So this is the name of, it's the name of the book, right? How do we know it's a book? Because it's not in parentheses, it's not in uh, quotations, it is in the italics, so we know that it must be a book, it must be the bigger container. University of Massachusetts Press, P meaning press. And then here we have a slash and Center for Public Library of Congress. Center for the Book, Library of Congress. What does this mean? This is just more information we've added here because when we look up into the front of the book, usually the front of the book, the very first page or second page, it tells us who made this book, where was it made, who was the publisher. And if this is the way they wrote it, then this is the way we copy it, right? Now, of course, we can use abbreviations like P for press or UP for university press or other abbreviations that are inside the MLA manual. However, the key point here is follow what is given by the publisher inside the title page of the book. And then we end with the year of publication, 2007. Let's look at another example. Colin Merlin and Rupert Hart, Hart Davis, editors. Okay, so what's this case? This case is two people, and remember, if we have one person, we must have the last and first name. If we have two people, we must have the whole name. If we have three people, we must use at all. And in this case, what do we have? In this case, we have just two people. So in MLA, if you have two people, you must list both people. However, pay attention to how we write their names. The first person is last name first, Holland. First name, Merlin. We have a comma, A-N-D, A-N-D. You do not use the ampersand. This ampersand, whoops, let me write it over here. This thing here. Ampersand, no, you cannot use the ampersand. You must use A and D. So here we have our and. Now look what we have. Rupert Hart Davis. That's a person's name. Some people's English names can be written with the hyphen like that. That's okay. There is no comma here. Why is there no comma here? Because Rupert is the first name. Hart Davis is the last name. Let me say that again. Very confusing, right? Rupert is the first name, Hart Davis is the last name, the family name, the surname. Now, this is a reversal. It's very interesting in MLA, quite the opposite of APA. And it's easy to get confused because it looks like it's inconsistent. But pay attention, we'll follow the rule. For the first author, that is Colin Merlin, for the first author, you must use the last name first, then a comma, then you put the first name last. That comma there tells you that the name is reversed. Whenever you see a name and a comma, then another name, this is telling you that the last name is first and the first name is last. So that's the first author. What about the 
second author. For second author, you use the conjunction and. And for the second author, you go ahead and you put the first name first and the last name last. And there's no comma. No comma. Because comma tells you the names are reversed. So, for MLA, you only reverse the names of the first author in the reference list. The second author, you write the name normally. First name first, last name last. And what about for three authors? Well, three authors are easy. Easy. The first name comes, the first author comes first, then you say et al. And that first author is last name first, first name last. Whoa, whoa, whoa. getting confused yet? Okay, so the MLA looks like it's got some inconsistency there, but actually it's pretty easy once you get the idea. It's only the first author that we reverse the name. In this case, the title, which looks like the title of a book, is actually the title of a video or a TV show, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So this here is the name of the media, which in this case is a television program. And the next thing we put here is not the publishing house for a book, but rather the production company, that is, who produced it. Movies will always have a production company and TV shows will have a production company and in fact you usually see that at the beginning, don't you? Who produced this or at the end. So you just include that here rather than the book publishing company. And then we have the years. Now here we don't have one year. Why? Because it's 1997 to 2003. What does that mean? That means that this television show went on for that amount of time. So this is a little bit of a special case. What we're doing is we're citing some information or we're talking about someone inside of our research paper and that person is an actress and that actress's name is Geller Sarah Michelle. Last name first, don't forget. And that is an actress or a performer. And what we're doing is we're citing that person or we're saying something about that person or we're taking some information that is kind of from that person. And it's not just one episode or one thing that person said, but rather the whole series of television shows that that person was in. So we use the name of the whole television series, in this case called Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And what's the date? 97 to 2003, 1997 to 2003. So that is fairly common, a little bit of a special case, but fairly common. Now here's the same television program, only now we're not citing the actress. In our research paper, in our book, we're not talking about the actress, but rather we're talking about the director, where we're citing some information about the television show, and that information we're, slight, we're citing, that information we're talking about, is related to how the show was made or maybe some camera angle or something special in the show and who controlled that? The director controlled that. So in that case the reference would be the director and here the director is Whedon, Joss. That is the last name is Whedon and the first name is Joss, Joss Whedon. And what is he? Is he an actor? No, he's creator. Actually in this case he's the showrunner I think. But in any case we look into the show information and we go ahead and we write that. Now how do we find that information? How do we know what is the job that the person did or who's in charge of that? Well you can go to the internet of course and you can look at IMDB which is the internet movie database which has a lot of detail about all the work done on different movies, television shows, who's responsible and what their titles are. So that's a good source. Internet Movie Database, IMDB, that's correct. And 
last, we end up with very similar information, right? The production company is still the same production company, Mutant Enemy, and then the years of the television show, 1997 to 2003, are still the same year, so that's the same. What about in the case of we're going to cite the same thing, this TV show, but now we're not really talking about the actress. We're not really talking about something the director did, but rather we're just citing the show in general, something maybe we're writing a paper about uh, society or some kind of history, and this television show has some impact. How do we cite that? If we talk about the show, we cannot just talk about it in our research paper and have no reference. We need to have a reference in the reference list to tell where did this information come from, how can the reader find more detail. So in this case, we have no person. So we just begin with the name of the media, the name of the book. For example, if there was a book with no author, we would just begin with the book's name. Here we're beginning with the television show's name, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It's italicized, which is the same as underlined, so we know that this is the television show or the movie or the book. We have a period, and then we're going to specify. It's created by Joss Whedon, comma, Performance by Sarah Michelle Geller, comma, Newton Enemies Production Company, comma, 1997 to 2003. So in that example, we have a perfect situation of, you know, we put these two together, kind of. So MLA is flexible. L MLA is giving you a kind of overall guideline. And it depends on what you're citing. It depends on the information you have. And in this case, this last one, we're not talking about the actress, we're not talking about the creator, we're not talking about the producer, we're not talking about the director, rather we're just talking about the whole show. But we do, we do need to say where did it come from, uh, and created by Josh Reed's performance by Sarah Michelle Gellar. That's a nice little combo example. What if there really is no author, we can't find an author, then as we just said, we can skip the author. So here's an example of Beowulf, which is an ancient famous book or story, and we don't know who the author is. So what do we do? We just do not write the author's name. Do not write the word anonymous. What does anonymous mean? Anonymous means that the author is unknown. An unknown author we can call anonymous. However, the MLA is very clear. Do not write anonymous. Just skip it and begin with the name of the book or the paper or the movie or whatever. Then we say translated by Alan Sullivan and Timothy Murphy. Now, first name first, last name last. First name first, last name last. They are not the author. They are translators in this case. And then we have an editor. So it's edited by First name first, Sarah. Last name last, Anderson, comma. Pearson is the publisher, comma. And 2004 is the publication date of this version. Now, there could be other people who translate the book, and the book does not belong to someone. The book is rather written anonymously. We don't know who it is. But in this case, we say this one, the one I have, is from Pearson, and it came out in 2004. So that's very clear to help someone find it if they're looking for it. Now another common situation with no author would be the paper or book is published and it does not have the name of an author, but it was published by a group, by a company maybe. I think a good example would be if you go online and you look for a company's annual report. These are not published by a person, they are published by the company. So what are some good examples of that? Well, here's one here. Consequences of rapid population growth in developing countries. That looks like a book. It's published by Taylor and Francis. But who actually wrote it? Who actually made it? The content of it? Not a person. So it's from the organization, the United Nations. So we put the name of the organization there just as if it was a person. Now, you do not use 
the last name first, first name last, because it doesn't have a first name or a last name. It's just a company name for an organization name. United Nations, period. Then the name of the book, period. And then the publisher, comma, and the year, 1991. Here's an example. Reading at Risk, a survey of literary reading in America, National Endowment of the Arts, comma, June 2004. Well, what happened here? We have nothing at the beginning. We don't even have United Nations at the beginning. Why? Because this is truly anonymous. We don't know who wrote this. However, it was published by National Endowment of the Arts, which is like an organization or a government organization. So in that case, similar to the United Nations, only we go ahead and skip that and just begin with the title of what the book is or the publication is.